and I was going to make a comment about saying podcast, and I screwed up picks before I could make a comment about saying podcast, which is a different kind of show, one of which Chris would be. I'd uh, be the star of that one. I'd be good at that one. Here it is, Chris Sims Unbuttoned PFT PM Joint Mega Picks Podcast. I'm fighting through the COVID. The COVID got finally the got COVID. me after three and a half years. Right. The over-under was three and a half. See? And it hit right on three and a half. If you came to my house on Saturday and smoked weed, you probably wouldn't have got it. But you chickened out and you didn't do it, and now you got it. You know, that's 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 what happens, right? There's actually like a lot of research on that, but I do wish you would have smoked weed on, with me, right? So sorry. My wife watched PFT Live today, and when I came downstairs with my mask on, trying not to infect her, although I've already exposed her to it, she's just trying to be as careful as she can, she said, it sure sounds like you got it at Chris's house on Saturday night. <laughs> Listen to what he had to say. I think you got it from him on Saturday night. I, I, I would say, you know, I, I'm sorry, but you're, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say. I'm not sure if I had COVID, but I had a lot of the same symptoms, certainly. And uh, yeah, you you probably do have it because of me. It's weird though, because like like I told you, nobody else in my family is having anything other than the sniffles. So, uh, but I don't know. I'm sorry. Tell your wife I'm sorry. I really am sorry for her. I don't really care about you that much. Well, our big concern continues to be her parents because they had it a couple of years ago. My father-in-law had a rough time with it, hospitalized twice. So we're gonna make sure they're tested and tested, and if anything happens we'll make sure that he gets all the proper care that he needs i'm told that the first two years much more problematic than what the virus has become the last year and a half hopefully that's true hopefully that holds there are still a lot of people who get hospitalized and die from it but not like it was at first so with that happy news we get into i might have gotten it from the duck that bit me maybe maybe it's duck born and your duck that bit me gave it to me. Yes, maybe that's, that's right. I'm... Yeah, we got it from the Wu, the Wuhan lab over there in China or something right there. I don't I don't know where we got that duck from. <laughs> uh, we gotta watch. You know, gotta watch it. I don't know, but no, I don't think my ducks had it. They're they're out in the free air all the time, so don't worry about them. <laughs> all right, let's get to it. Last week. Fueled by the fact that the Rams lost to the Bengals, or I would be up two games. We're now even uh, against the the spread. Or no, God, I completely screwed that up. We're even straight up last week at ten and six. I was going for eleven and five, and you would have been nine and seven. That didn't work, and it would have extended my lead to three games straight up against the spread. I beat you by two games. I don't pay as much attention to the spreads and how the spreads affect the outcome as we go through the week. I just look at the final scores, and I want to be right in the straight up picks. Best bets, you were 2-1, and one, I was 1-2. and two. That sucks. So far, narrow edge do I hold in two of the categories, and we are even in best bets, which are not our best bets. They're not very good. Four and five, not good at all. That's where we are so far. And you can play along with us every week this season. DraftKings has set up the free $1,000 Florio and Sims Pick'em Pool. Pick every game against the spread for a chance at a $1,000 prize pool every week. Download the DraftKings app, click on the Pools tab, and enter the free $1,000 Florio and Sims pick and pool to make your picks or visit DraftKings.com slash pools. Just like us, you've got to enter all your picks before kickoff of the Thursday night game, and all odds are provided by DraftKings Sportsbook. As we go through these games, one at a time, we begin with the most compelling Thursday night matchup so far of the season and possibly the best one of the year, the Lions at the Packers. The Lions are one-and-a-half-point favorites at Lambeau Field. When in the hell have you ever seen that? Over under a 45.5. Chris, who do you like? Well, it's dicey. Like, I've gone back and forth with this one. You know, the biggest reason, listen, I, 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 w- I would probably favor the Lions for sure, but I'm worried about some of the offensive line injuries we got with the Detroit Lions. That, that does, like, make me think differently. You know, again, you, you've heard me kind of wax poetically about – This Packers D-line, they're talented, they're young, they got a little depth there. I mean, they've really done a good job the last two drafts bolstering that crew there. So I worry about that from the Lions in that standpoint. And the Packers showed an understanding last year of how to defend that Lions offense to a degree. So that's that does worry me. You know, the other side of the ball, like, hey, we like Jordan Love. It's certainly 
you know, had some moments. I haven't, we haven't seen anything consistent through four quarters yet. And, you know, then there's Aaron Jones coming back and Christian Watson coming back there and still Nova David Bakhtiari. And this Lions defense is definitely better than it was last year and it's played pretty damn good the first three weeks. I think it's a close football game. You know, I'm not one that's going to be a best bet for me at all. But I'm going to take the Lions 24-20 uh, in, in a close one. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, but I don't feel real confident about that. I could see it being 20, 24-20 the other way too. I got 23-20, but not the Lions. I got the Packers winning this one. I just believe in Jordan Love, and I heard his voice on the phone after they came back and beat the Saints. He really does want to shut up all the doubters and the haters, and this is his chance with a primetime audience watching him play against the Lions big. team that the organization would very much like to beat after the Lions came into Lambeau Field and knocked them out of the playoffs last year. This one could go either way. I agree it's not a best bet for me, but I will take the Packers 23-20, so we already disagree. I like it. One game. Boom. With 15 to go. Now let's go to Sunday. And before we get to 1 o'clock, we have to go to 9.30 a.m. because you sound like y'all from London. <laughs> the Jaguars hosting the Falcons. The Jaguars playing consecutive games, two in a row in London. Hosting the Falcons, then visiting, air quotes, visiting the Buffalo Bills. The Jaguars are three-point favorites. Over-under is 43. Who do you like? Well, this is, you know, the Falcons are a, a good team in just about every area except the most important area. So that's scary. It's hard to put your money behind them right now when you go, wait, um, it's 2023, it's a passing league. Oh, and this team can't pass. So I'm a little concerned about that right now. I mean, it's three games in a row of very underwhelming performances from the passing offense of the Atlanta Falcons and Desmond Ritter. It don't look good. So that's scary to me. I like everything else about the Falcons football team, but they need more in that department. And then I think, you know, I look at Jacksonville, and of course we know they have a talented football team. Their offense, it's mistakes so far. They're a little like your Minnesota Vikings team. I mean, they had some mistakes in that first game that they won against the Colts, but they made it dicey. Of course, week two, it was red zone issues and turnovers too against the Kansas City Chiefs and turnovers at a bad times last week too, let alone, you know, letting a fullback return a, a, a kick return for a touchdown. But I think the Jaguars are close. And I do think the Jaguars have the advantage in these type of games. Of course, they're, they're regulars over in London. Uh, so because of that, and my, my lack of faith in the Falcons' passing game, I'm going Jaguars 24-17. Last year, it was the loss to the Broncos in London that provided the wake-up call for Trevor yeah. Lawrence and the right. Jaguars. So I'm a little nervous about this one because I feel like maybe it's going to be the same thing. They're going to lose one or two of these games in London, and the wake-up call comes after. But I think last week's embarrassment at home to the Texans, the lowly dysfunctional Texans, to lose by 20 to them, to never really creating the sense that they were in it. Now, they made it close before the long touchdown return on the kickoff by Andrew Beck, but it still never felt like the Jaguars were going to erase that deficit and win that game, and they ultimately lose by 20. So that was the wake-up call. I don't know what they're going to do with the Bills next week, but I know for now they beat the Falcons, and I'll go 24-20. So we both have the Jaguars winning. We both have the Jaguars covering the game from London that starts Sunday morning. Next up, Bills hosting the Dolphins. Buffalo, two-and-a-half-point favorites, over-under of 54. It's the only over-under of 50 or more points for the week. This is the game of the day. This is the one to watch. This one shouldn't be trapped in the cluster of games at 1 o'clock Eastern, but it is. Dolphins, Bills, who do you like? Man, I mean, it, this game's got it all. It really does. Now, with the Dolphins and everything there, the one thing, you know, you look at, you go, okay, offensive line, right? You know, where's Teron Armstead at right now? That's certainly something to look at. You know, this, this, this Bills D line has been real, the real deal the last two weeks especially. Jalen Phillips, the pass rusher for the Miami Dolphins, is he going to be healthy and able to play, right? Because, I mean, we know, again, you let Josh Allen sit back there against a four-man rush or anything like that, he's going to tear you apart. I don't care how good your secondary is. So those are two injuries that definitely worry me a little bit as far as the Dolphins side of this whole thing. 
Now, you know, there's some banged up guys on on the Bills, but it doesn't look like it's like, oh, they're going to miss time or miss the game here. At least it doesn't seem that way. Maybe I'm wrong. I know Leonard Floyd's on the injury report. Jordan Poyer's got a little banged up, but he usually misses, so you know, a Wednesday or Thursday practice because of his age or whatever else. But it's McDaniel versus McDermott. And that, to me, is where it's going to be all about. I mean, we saw week one, the Dolphins go up and down the field against the Chargers. Week two, defense, good defense in the Patriots, good game plan, good coaching, slowed it down a little bit. Game was, you know, up for grabs there kind of in the fourth quarter a little, right? And then last week we saw the explosion. Uh, we're, I think this is one we see more of a Dolphins offense that looked, looked like it did against the New England Patriots. One, I do have faith in what the Bills' D-lines look like right now. Two, their middle linebackers, Bernard and Matt Milano, they fly around the football field. They're both playing phenomenal. And McDermott is one of the kings of, I don't know what this defense is, but they dropped a whole lot of over here, and this is where they were trying to throw the ball, and he's got it locked up. And they don't play man-to-man, -man, and they're really masters at passing off receivers and zone coverage. So at that, at home, that crazy-ass crowd up there in Buffalo, and I think Josh Allen and the offense have found something here the last two weeks, running the ball a little bit, Gabe Davis infused in both game plans. I'm going to go with the Bills, pulling off the upset. Dolphins kind of feeling themselves, and I know it's not an upset because they're favored. Upset. I know. Not I was shocked to see that. Not I'm going to go Bills, 28-24. All right. What I'm going to do, and I agree with you and everything that you're saying, and this is a big game, and it feels like they're destined to meet a third time this year, just like last year. Yeah. One way or the other, however it shakes out, if they both get into the playoffs, and remember, AFC East, given that very difficult schedule, it may be that only one team gets in, but if they both get in, I just feel like they're going to find a way to play each other to settle this the third time. So the Bills, in my mind, win the one in Buffalo. The Dolphins win the one in Miami and to be determined as to what happens in the postseason. So I'm going to give the Bills this one. This is a close one. I don't have a strong feeling about it. It's not going to be a best bet. And I'm also going to thread the needle here. I'm going 24-23 Bills. So Dolphins cover, Bills win. I think it will be close, and I think it could be within that two-and-a-half-point window. I know I'm really cutting it tight, but I'm also hedging in the event that the Dolphins win outright. I'll at least get half a loaf out of this mess if the Dolphins... Oh, I don't care the about the spread. I don't really Bills. care about the I do spread now. one, except I care about the spread right here in the third game of the day. <laughs> I just don't... I don't pay attention to it. Once we make the picks, I just ignore it until the next week. I'll look and see how our straight-up picks did, but I never go back and tabulate, oh, how did we do against the spread? Right. It's kind of a, a surprise for me on Thursday, and today it was a pleasant surprise because I was 8-8 eight and eight and you were 6-10. and ten. Suck it. All right. <laughs> Vikings at the Panthers. Vikings four and a half point favorites. Vikings haven't started 0-5 since 1962. And if they lose this one, they'll be 0-4. And, and a home loss against the Chiefs away from matching their worst start ever. Panthers at home, 45.5 over under. And according to DraftKings, 83% of the handle is on Minnesota. Chris, are we going to be blowing the horn finally? Even though I'm probably going to be here because of the COVID that you gave me, are we going to be blowing the horn for a Vikings victory on Sunday? Well, uh, yes, I expect us to to be doing that. Now, I don't think it's going to be easy. You know, you know one, one, it's, you know, in Carolina, that defense is good. We've seen that. I think you're going to get a little bit of a, you know, a desperation effort here by the Carolina Panthers, all of those things that kind of play into this. But ultimately, I just... You know, again, it, it, it seems like we're going to get Bryce Young this week. And, you know, Bryce Young offense is a little different than Andy Dalton offense. They're, they're, they manage Bryce Young a little bit. Andy Dalton last week, they had no fear, hold the ball. Who cares if he gets crushed and killed? So what? Throw the ball down the field. They're not going to play that way with Bryce Young. They're, they're a little bit in protection mode there that way with him. Uh, but, yeah, I don't have enough faith in their offense, even though this Vikings defense is nothing to write home about. Oh, uh, I just don't think there's enough there and firepower from the Panthers side of the ball in the offense to get it done. And really, your Vikings offense has been damn good. I mean, it really has. Can they just get rid of the disease of <laughs> up, fumbling the ball, doing stupid shit? I mean, that's really what the MO of the Vikings team has been to this point. 
And so I, I'm going to say this week they play a cleaner brand of football. It ain't easy. I'm going 21-16 Vikings on the road. You got the Vikings covering that four and a half point spread. Yeah, the Vikings give new meaning to your f the play stat. They do it to <laughs> yeah, themselves. Right. <laughs> by dropping the ball repeatedly. I I think that this is one the Vikings know they need. They are desperate. Now, would I be surprised if they pissed down their leg? I would not be surprised because there's something dysfunctional happening between Kirk Cousins and Kevin O'Connell. That tick, 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 tick. First and goal from the five. Cousins isn't willing to go up and spike the ball. He's trying to listen to O'Connell. Why does he need O'Connell to tell him, go up and spike the freaking ball, and we get three cracks at the end zone? It just felt rushed. It felt awkward. It felt stupid. And I just wonder what's up with those two. But still, I'll go 27-17. Vikings getting to 1-3 and three before they fall to 1-4, and four, losing at home next weekend to the Kansas City Chiefs. So the Vikings at least get their win, and we'll see where they go from there. Next up. Another game featuring a pair of winless 0-3 teams. The Denver Broncos going to Sean Payton's hometown of Chicago to take on the Bears. Another over-under of 45.5. The Broncos three-and-a-half-point favorites. And again, DraftKings has 83% of the handle on Denver. Payton spoke yesterday about how important it is for them to just get a win, but he understands it's important for the Bears as well. Both were embarrassed last week. Who gets the win in this one? Yeah, I'm going Broncos. I have no faith in the Bears. No, no way. I mean, what, what are you going to get behind the Bears with? The 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 Broncos. There's some things to get behind. I mean, they should they could easily be two and one, uh, and they they can. And Sean Payton's going to still be able to sell that. Hey, this game this season salvageable. We blew two games early on where we could have beat the Commanders or the Raiders, and we messed it up. Hey, week through we know is a debacle. I'm going to play the fact that Sean Payton's going to have the the team highly motivated this week. They were embarrassed. The coaching staff was even embarrassed more so that they get their best, you know, effort from that standpoint. And then, you know, I just like we've been saying, I, I there's nothing I can like jump on with the Bears' offense. There, there's nothing. I, you know, I'm sure there'll be ton of excuses of why Justin Fields didn't do good again this week. And the answer is, is because he's an athlete who plays quarterback, and he's not a quarterback who's an athlete. There's there's an issue there, and the, the, we're we're seeing it. So I have no faith in that part. And then we know the defense is not special either. You know, and then that's I just don't think that bodes well. I think you're gonna get the best of Sean Payton, Russell Wilson this weekend. I think they win this one 27-16. I got 28-24 and all the same reasons you've articulated. The Broncos need to get one of these winnable games because they've got some very difficult games still to come, including a couple of games against the Chiefs, one of which will be played on a Thursday night. So I don't know how that's going to go, but they need to eradicate whatever that was. And Peyton referred to it yesterday as a perfect storm where they did a lot of things wrong. He talked about all the support that he and the coaching staff and the players got from people they know via text message. And, you know, he's being pragmatic. That's what we said on Monday. You just got to be pragmatic. You lost a game. That's it. Another game is coming. You got to do what you can to try to win that one and get that win and get on the board. And for the Bears, it'll be 3-18 and 18 for Matt Eberflus, who I think is moving dangerously toward the, the uh, time to move on phase of his coaching career. First try as a head coach. Plenty of coordinators can't get it done at the next level. And 3-18 and 18 is not a good start for Matt Eberflus if they lose on Sunday. Ravens at the Browns, a pair of 2-1 and one teams. Cleveland, three-point favorites. Over-under. 40.5. This is one of the tough ones for me of the day. But, you know, the Ravens, they, they, they blew a chance to beat the Colts. And the Browns were just dominant last week. You can tell where I'm leaning, Chris. Where are you going? Well, go ahead. Finish it off then. Go ahead. You give me your, your synopsis. Let's hear it. That defense is so freaking good. Yeah. And they should have won the Monday night game in Pittsburgh. But. It was one of those nights in Pittsburgh. It was just one of those games in Pittsburgh. It was a pasta and meatballs game. It was a terrible towel game. It was they played Renegade, and it sparked the touchdown in the fourth quarter that allowed the Steelers to overcome a deficit, even though they gained minus seven yards in the fourth quarter. The Browns should have won that game. They gave the Steelers 14 points. The offense was better last week, even without Nick Chubb. Deshaun Watson is moving toward being the guy that he was. The defense is amazing. They're going to swarm. They're going to harass. 
and they're going to slow down the Ravens' offense, and I think the Browns are going to win this one. I've got a score of 21-17, to 17, so I like the Browns to win. I like the Browns to cover barely 21-17 Cleveland. Yeah, I, listen, I, I agree with a lot of what you said there. Uh, I do. I think the, the big thing for me is, I mean, I, I could see this being a defensive struggle, right? Not being an easy football game. We know the Ravens got big people up front. They shouldn't be totally overmatched in the run game there. Right? They're very well coached on that side of the ball. You know, the Ravens defense is. But, but it is a, it's a tough task because if Watson looks like he did last week, we know the Browns are going to be able to run the ball to some degree, and you got to be worried about it and put some extra people in the box to stop it. And if Watson's throwing the ball even close to what he was last week, they're going to be tough to beat. They are, right? And and you look at the – without Marlon Humphrey right now, I don't think you sit there and go, ooh, the corners for Baltimore are so good that they can shut down, you know, this group down in, in, in Cleveland. Now, the other side of the ball is is the big thing. You're You're right about that. Cleveland's D is real at all three levels. The coaching's good. And Baltimore's offense is still figuring it out. I mean, it is. I don't know what else to say. You know, they had two good quarters there with the Bengals game and, and, and made some plays. But other than that, it's been inconsistent and all over the place. The Ravens' offense needs to be better. There's way too many assets and talent on that offense, and I know some of them are injured, but that's got to stop happening too. I mean, it's a first-round left tackle. He's he's hurt all the time, Ronnie Stanley. Linderbaum, their first-round center, he was hurt last week. You know, They got Mark Andrews. They got Odell. They got Rashad Bateman. They got Zay Flowers. They got Lamar Jackson. If you're wondering what's going on, the Ravens offense needs to pick up its, you know, workman share of the load here. It, they're too talented. There's too much assets. There's too much money on that side of the ball for them to be having games like we see last week. It, it's just it's too much of that. And I don't have any faith in it. I, I, I got to, like, see it a little bit more to believe it, and especially against this group. It sounds like Newsom's going to be playing a corner. Those two corners are shut down. The pass rush is real. The linebackers are real. I'm going to go with the Browns here. I'm going 23-21 Browns. So you've got the Ravens with the slim cover, the slim thread cover. the needle there because yep. the Browns are three-point favorites. Should be a great game, though. Old school, grind it out. One thing to keep an eye on, though, Deshaun Watson limited yesterday with a shoulder injury, right shoulder, throwing shoulder. Other than that, you know, it's we, – we don't have very complete injury information for Sunday games because we've got one day of injury reports to go on, and all we know is whether or not a guy practiced, but limited for Watson with a right shoulder injury. So that is definitely something to watch. Steelers – with some travel issues coming home from Las Vegas. It took them about seven, eight, nine hours longer than it was supposed to. They get back to Pittsburgh. Now they go to Houston, where the Steelers are two-and-a-half-point favorites, over under a 42.5. The Steelers, a surprising two-and-one. They looked pretty good on Sunday night against the Raiders before they allowed the Raiders to get back into it and make it interesting. Do they get another win to run the winning streak to three? and to keep the Texans from building the momentum that they found last week with a 20-point win over Jacksonville. Yeah, I, I, I don't think this is going to be easy. This will not be a bet, bet, best bet. I'm going to pick the Steelers, but I don't feel good about it. I don't. I think this is a game that could be upset alert. You know, like you're talking about, a little bit of a messed, week, messed up, short week, right? Uh, and, and, oh, we're playing the Texans. That will be no problem. The Texans' defense is a pain in the butt. You know, Will Anderson's a really damn good player. I'm not sure he's ever going to be like 15, a sack, 15 sacks a year type of guy, but damn, he's good. Their front seven is fast and disruptive. <laughs> Him and Greenard off the edge. Sheldon Rankins and Malik Collins in the middle. They cause issues. Their linebackers, the two, they got two Alabama kids in there that, are, that fly around the field. right? Their scheme itself is good. And, of course, I'm still not ready to write home about the Steelers' offense. I mean, last week was certainly better. But I, I, I'm not sold that this is going to be like, oh, they're going to march the ball up and down the field on the Houston Texans. And what scares me a little bit is Houston, C.J. Stroud's awesome. Like, it's official. It's, it, it's, he's really damn good. Like, they can actually go, wait, we're going to ask you to, like, carry the team. 
through three weeks of his rookie year. He's showing he's like, okay, no problem, guys. You need me to throw for 40 times every week? No, no problem. I got it. And, you know, this is a team that we know does stay patient with the run. I'm going to pick the Steelers, but I don't feel great about it. 20 to 17 Steelers on the road. I got 26-20, and I agree with you. It's a grinded out game for the Steelers. It's one of those where they'll make a play at the right time. But Stroud has been great. Whoever was trying to get him to fall so they could draft him did their damnedest to crap on him in the run-up to the draft. Seriously. Somebody knew he was going to be pretty damn good, so they talked shit about him in the hopes that they would fall. The ultimate Machiavellian example of football personnel evaluation and manipulation. We want a guy so badly we're willing to spread a bunch of crap about him, which is what someone was doing. The Texans, to their credit, were not deterred by it at all, but still, I think the Steelers just kind of have that. They've got that, that vibe right now. That find a way. Yeah, I that, hear you. That defense that, that complements the offense that is slowly getting better, and I think they pull it off. All right, Rams at the Colts. At one point, 1972, Robert Ursay owned the Rams. Carol Rosenblum owned the Colts. They traded the franchises 51 years ago. They get together in Indianapolis. Rams are one-point favorites. Colts surprisingly 2-1. and one. Gardner Minshew getting it done with Anthony Richardson concussed, although Richardson was back fully participating in practice on Wednesday. Looks like he'll be good to go. Can the Colts get to 3-1, and one, something no one would have expected, Chris? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm saying yeah. I, I'm, I'm going with them. Uh, I, I, you know, one, Richardson coming back is, is not good news for the Rams because it just – the Rams are not real big up front. And now they're going to have to deal with an offensive line and, and a running attack that's not bad. And you add Anthony Richardson onto that, and it becomes that much more dangerous, right? So, again, I don't think that's going to be, like, pretty. I'm not expecting huge points or whatever else, but I do think they're going to be able to chew some clock up. And because the Rams are going to have to put more people in the box to stop the run game than they would like, I think that's going to cause some, you know, some moments where we're going to go, ooh, nice throw by Anthony Richardson. Ooh, good job right there. You know, but my real worry is the other side of the ball. The Colts defense is good, and as we've seen every week, like Matthew Stafford, Stafford is in protect my life mode. It, it's unbelievable. They can't block anybody, right? What did Trey Hendrickson have last week, 27 quarterback pressures? I mean, it, it was something absurd. It was like 14 or 15, right? This this D line for the Colts is good. I mean, Quiddy Pay, damn good off the edge. Ecubomb, damn good off the edge. And then they're not gonna have anybody to block the Forrest Buckner up the middle. Now Buckner, I know, is dealing with a little groin thing, and we'll see, but I really think that's gonna be the issue right there. The Rams, it's gonna be tough sledding. I'm gonna go with the Colts winning this one, 1916 at home. I've got the Colts twenty to seventeen. I think that the Monday night game, Matthew Stafford got banged around so much, we're going to start to see the deterioration of his play relative to how great it was in the first two weeks of the season. That he gets those injuries that he doesn't even tell the team about, and it impacts his ability to go out there and perform. I've just, you know, we, we talked about the decision to punt on fourth and five with 6.09 to play. I really do think at some level Sean McVay just didn't want the final score to look that bad. He doesn't want to have a bunch of demoralizing final scores. It's just a weird vibe right now for the L.A. Rams. And I think the Colts, you know, at home, you've got the Rams coming off the short week after playing the Bengals, guys getting banged around. I feel like the Colts can pull it off with Richardson or Gardner Minshew. I assume it's going to be Richardson, but I just think the, the Colts can pull it off. 20-17, to 17, Colts win the game, and the Rams fall to 1-3 and three after getting that week one unlikely win over the Seattle Seahawks to start the season. Buccaneers at the Saints. Derek Carr or Jameis Winston will be the quarterback on Sunday. Now, people expect Derek Carr to miss time with that shoulder injury he suffered when he crashed into the Lambeau Field unfrozen tundra on Sunday. If it's not him, it will be Jameis Winston. The Saints are three-point favorites either way with an over-under of 40.5. This was a great game. A great matchup when it was Tom Brady on the Buccaneers. This is the first time post Tom Brady they get together. Who do you think wins it? Yeah, I, I, it it's um, it should be good. I mean, both defenses pose some problems, right? Uh, the the Saints offense, yeah, I'm expecting 
Jameis Winston. There's going to be a bump, right? We got Alvin Kamara back this week, right? I'm, I'm, I th- all right, good. I wasn't doubting myself. Yes. I was like, wait, did I hear that right? I'm, I'm pretty sure. That's going to help their football team out for sure, right? Now this, this Saints offense, like you, you heard me say, it, it's another one. Like I'll say with the Ravens, it should be better than what it looks like so far. It should be. There's, there's too much money and good players on the O line. There's too many weapons at receiver and all of that, and now you got Kamara back. It it should not be being outgained by a hundred yards to Green Bay and all of those issues, you know. And it's a little bit of like what I, you hear me say about the Bengals. It's just basic West Coast bullshit offense. It's like you run two slants and you run a slant and a flat, and they'll be all tricked, and we'll figure they'll they'll be they won't know what to do. Double slant and slant flat. Oh shit. I mean, it's it's annoying. It's too basic that way. But I still think they're better than the Bucks, and I don't have any faith in the Bucks offense. That that's the, really the problem there. Uh, so I'm gonna pick this, take the Saints to win a close one here, twenty to seventeen. Good, good, because we needed a disagreement. We hadn't disagreed on any of the Sunday games. I just think the Buccaneers win this one. This is pasta and meatballs territory. Baker Mayfield has been gritty and tough. They. They got outclassed by the Eagles on Sunday or on Monday night, excuse me, but they did win their first two games of the season. I don't have a whole lot of faith in Jameis Winston if Derek Carr doesn't play. I'm making the bet that Carr's not going to play, and it's going to be Winston, and it's just going to be too much for the Saints, even with Alvin Kamara back. 27-23, the Buccaneers get it rolling. Mike Evans motivated to show that he can get it done, even against Marshawn Lattimore, who has constantly bedeviled him and frustrated him. Evans just seems to be operating on a higher level. He had that great catch on Monday night. He was the shining spot in that offense. Give me the Bucks to win. Commanders and Eagles. It looks like it should be a good game when you see Commanders 2-1, and one, Eagles 3-0. and oh. But the Eagles are eight-point favorites, and that doesn't feel like enough. 43-and-a-half over under. Who do you have in this one? I think you can tell where I'm headed. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to take the Eagles, too. I, I, I do think it's scary. You know, I, I do. I mean, you know, we know that this Washington defense has got talent. They've shown the ability to slow the Eagles down a little bit. They did that last year. Uh, the, you know, it, it's a big football game for them. I mean, you feel like Sam Howell will be better because of how reckless he was last week against the Buffalo Bills, right? So I can picture the Washington defense keeping them in this a little bit. You know, they're good enough with their four first rounders up front and a, and another first rounder at linebacker in Davis that I go, I, but th- this might be one team that the Eagles can't just line up and run the same play all the way down the field and just go, you can't stop it, right? I mean, it's unbelievable. It really is. I don't think people really realize what they're watching. I mean, they they literally can run the same play 10 plays in a row and go down and score a touchdown. It, and It's like high school football. I've never seen anything like it in the NFL, right? But this might be one group that could slow it down. My biggest concern, Mike, is the other side, though. I mean, you saw Washington couldn't block Buffalo last week. They ain't going to block this group. Are you kidding me? This group is ridiculous. They're insane on that side of the ball, too. So I'm going to take the Eagles 28-17. I feel like it's going to feel closer than that, but they kind of pull away late in the game. 31-10, Eagles, and – Look, I just don't think the commander is going to be able to deal with those offensive lines on either side of the ball, especially the defensive line of the Philadelphia Eagles. After what they did to Sam Howell last week, the Bills, the interceptions, the sacks, and the Eagles defense is better than the Buffalo defense. So give me the Eagles 31 to 10. Last game in the one o'clock window, Bengals at the Titans, Cincinnati two and a half point favorite. Joe Burrow questions about whether or not he will be good to go. He played on Monday night. Seemed to not aggravate the calf injury. The Titans looked like shit against the Cleveland Browns. 27-3 loss that stunned, I think, both of us. Do the Titans find a way to beat the Bengals, or do the Bengals get their second win of the season, Chris? Well, I feel like this is the kind of game that, you know, bodes well for the Titans, right? I mean, we're, you know, again, I just made fun of, like, the Saints and their offense. You know, again, the Bengals, are, are, you, are you kidding me? Like, are you kidding me? It, it's embarrassing to be that talented, that much assets, that much money on that side of the ball, and they look the way they do. The fact that we have to show on the Monday night telecast that, like, look, 
look, look at this. Like Jamar Chase lined up on the left and then he went to the right and then he went to the slot. Like it's some groundbreaking revelation that they've like changed offense forever. But the point is that's how basic are they are that the ESPN ana analysts had to basically go, look, he, he actually never moves and he moved tonight. That was their move. That was their, ooh, we spent all week in the lab and we came up with let's move him around a little bit. Like it's got to get better on that side of the ball. And they're going to let teams like the Titans hang around because they're so shitty on offense and so basic that they're easy to break down and figure out. So I'm going to take the Bengals here, right? But it's a scary game for them. And, yeah, I mean, I'm only taking them not because of Joe Burrow or Jamar Chase or T. Higgins. I'm taking them because I have no faith in the Tennessee Titans offense, and I think the Bengals defense is still damn good. And, you know, the Titans can't throw. They're not that great at running right now and either. So I'm going Bengals 20 to 19 on the road. I'm threading the needle. You're threading the needle. I'm not going to thread the needle. I'll go Bengals 24-21. And I'm not sure the Titans can even score 21 points against the, the Cincinnati defense. I'm just trying to be nice. Uh, Joe Burrow did fully participate in practice yesterday, so the calf better than it was last week. Came out of that Monday night game in a position where he's tracking in the right direction for that thing to begin and continue its healing process. So I feel even better about this. Bengals, what did I say? 23, what did I say? You said tw 20, yeah, I think you said 24 21. 24 21. 24 21. All right. Now, yeah, next, we're going to take a break. We're going to do the 4 o'clock game. I'm sorry. My COVID is catching up to me. We're going to do the 4 o'clock games when this joint edition of Chris Sims Unbuttoned and PFTPM Megapix podcast continues right after this. DraftKings Sportsbook is an official sports betting partner of the NFL, and new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Download the app and use promo code PFTLIVE when you sign up. DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown is yours. Four o'clock games. Raiders at the Chargers. Raiders looking not good of late. Chargers getting the win in Minnesota, but losing Mike Williams for the season. More opportunities for Quentin Johnson, their first round picket receiver. Chargers five and a half point favorites over under 48.5. Chris, who do you got? Yeah, I mean, you know, Cardinal, I mean, Chargers, as we know, like it, the defense is, is it's not good. I mean, again, it was self-inflicted wounds by, you know, your Minnesota Vikings football team last week and missed opportunities. Everybody moves the ball in the Chargers. So I don't expect that to change. I don't. Now, like, to what extent can the Raiders move the ball? Because they're disappointing in the fact that they were one of the best running teams in football last year, and this year they're one of the worst. It's hard to put your finger on, like, how could the offensive line go from dominant last year to – Every time they run the ball now, they're behind the line of scrimmage and push back. Josh Jacobs, as you heard me say last week, is not the same. He is a guy that missed a month of training camp and does not look like he's in shape or ready to go. So that worries me. But it's still the Chargers offense. And McDaniel will find way McDaniels will find ways to tear them up. I do think Jimmy Garoppolo and them are going to throw the ball effectively. You know, but the other side of the ball is yeah, the Chargers are going to move the ball effectively too. I mean, they've been pretty awesome offensively through three weeks. I mean, they're, they're saving the day. They're the ones that are making this game, you know, these games close in week one and two, right? And then, of course, last week, Justin Herbert was absolutely on fire and phenomenal picking apart the Vikings defense. I'm going Chargers here. I think this one's going to be high scoring, though. I'm going to go 34-28 Chargers. I'll go Chargers 30-20. to 20. We don't know if Jimmy Garoppolo is going to play. He's in the concussion protocol and did not practice on Wednesday. That doesn't mean he won't be cleared by Sunday. That definitely throws a curveball into what the Raiders' offense will do. But, look, I didn't expect the Raiders to be very good this year. I put them a click or two above the Texans as the two teams that have no chance to make it yeah. in the AFC. And the Texans actually are looking like a team that maybe has a chance to win a depleted AFC South. But the Raiders, the Raiders just haven't looked good. And yeah. I think their their bad luck continues in 2023 with a loss to the Chargers. I have them losing by 1030 to 20. All right. Next up, this is the big late afternoon game. The New England Patriots going to Dallas to take on the Cowboys, bringing Ezekiel Elliott with them. The Cowboys are nearly a touchdown favorite at 6.5 points. Over under of 43. Patriots got the win, their first win of the season against the Jets 
Can they extend the Cowboys' losing streak to two after the Cowboys were stunned by the Cardinals in week three, Chris? I Like, this is another one that I would not be shocked to see the upset here. I would not. You know, I don't think this is the greatest matchup in the world for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, the first being that the Patriots' defense is really good. And the Cowboys' offense is good, but I'm not ready to say real good yet. I'm, I'm not. You know, they're another team. It's, it's very basic. It's stationary. If they can't run the ball and use play action, they're not the same football team that way. Uh, and we know this Patriots' D is real. They got big people up front. On the defensive side of the ball, their secondary is damn good there, too. There's some offensive line concerns with the Cowboys as far as injury-related, so that worries me, right? The other side of the ball, like we've always talked about, the Cowboys are small up front, and you saw last uh, last week, you know, the, the, when, when they can't overload the box and just overwhelm the front with numbers, they get pushed around. Their D tackles are not very good. You never see them do anything. They never make any plays or disrupt or do anything that way, right? Middle linebacker play ain't all that great for Dallas either right now. So that that does worry me. And New England's going to be smart, and they're going to try to, like, make this game move along at a, at a fast pace in the fact of they're going to try to chew the clock, run the ball. They know they can't pass protect against the group and this speed of the Dallas Cowboys all night, all game long. I, like, want to take the Patriots. I just don't quite have the guts to do it. So I'm going to take the Cowboys in a close one, 24-21. I think it's like a last-second field goal that wins the game. But this will not be easy, and I will not be surprised if the, the Patriots pull off an upset on the road here. See, if the Cowboys had won last week in Arizona, I would think the Patriots would win this game, and it would be – if the Patriots didn't lose, still within the spread. I think the Cowboys got their wake-up call, and I think the Cowboys will take care of business here. I've got 28-20 as the final score, and it could be worse than that. I'm, I'm showing the Patriots some respect here. I just feel like the Cowboys will, will, will be in a better position to deploy their formula, you know, get an early score, make it hard for the Patriots to get back into the game and then maybe get another score. And then the Patriots are just chasing them all game long and never can quite get there. I just feel like after what happened last week, that embarrassment of the Cowboys by the Cardinals is just going to be enough to get it them is focused. a boost and then yep. they'll build up again. They'll build up again and everybody will say how great they are and they'll see how great they are and they'll think they're greater than they are. And then they'll fall up again, like they did against the Cardinals. Dak Prescott basically acknowledged that, that, that we put them on a pedestal, we as the media, and they see that and they believe it, and then they fall up again. Anyway, that's that one. 28-20 for me. Cowboys over the Patriots. The last game in the 4 o'clock window, Cardinals at the 49ers. Cardinals facing a team that has gotten some extra rest after the Thursday night thrashing of the Giants. Only double-digit spread of the week. 49ers, 14-point favorites over the Cardinals. How about some respect for the Cardinals? Sportsbooks, over under a 44. I assume you're going to pick the 49ers to win. I am. Are you going to pick the Cardinals to cover? I, I think I am. You know, I, I feel like I'm going to play the little bit of the, yeah, I, the Cardinals are better than we all thought, right? The Cardinals, their game plan on both sides of the ball has been damn good every game. Now, you know, they're young and they don't have, like, superstar talent across the board, so they've, you know, messed some things up, right? But I, I, I look at it and go – you know, one, they can run the ball a little bit, and they got enough weaponry with Hollywood Brown and Rondell Moore and uh, Michael Wilson, who they drafted out of Stanford, to where if you overplay stopping the run, those three guys can, can make plays and make something happen. And they do a good job of moving people around and creating formations. And, like, you know, a little bit like we talk about with Shanahan and McDaniel, they don't just – you know, they don't do it because, oh, this looks cool. Let's motion them. They have a rhyme and a reason. And they put the Cowboys in some schematical, like, headlocks last weekend with some of the things they did. And that's why, like, they were running through holes the size of Mack trucks because, like, literally Dallas couldn't even adjust to cover all the holes with some of the things they did. 
And I just think like, yeah, the 49ers are the, the one of the best teams in football. I can kind of picture this being a little bit like a sleep at the wheel. Eh, we're going to beat them. We're favored by 14. So I'm taking the 49ers to win, but the Cardinals to cover. I'm going to go 31-20. I got 30-17. to 17. The 49ers have scored 30 points in each of their three games. Why not make it four for four? 30-17, to 17, Cardinals cover. Gosh, damn. And the 49ers, the 49ers kind of – I think ease off a bit because they want to be ready to go the following week when it's a showdown on Sunday night football with the Dallas Cowboys. So I think that they're going to call off the dogs late in the game. Although Kyle Shanahan, very nervous about the possibility of, of having happened to the 49ers, what happened to them that, that week one game a couple of years ago in Detroit, where the lions almost came back after the 49ers called off the dogs. There's reason to rest your guys because you got a big game coming against the Cowboys. All right, we're going to take a break. Primetime games. The Jets, dysfunctional Jets, have Patrick Mahomes and Taylor Swift coming to town. We'll get you ready for that one with our picks and the rest of the games being played. There's only one Monday night game this week, so it's only one other game. So it's a Sunday night and a Monday night game for a change. We'll do those next here on PFTPM with Chris Simpson. DraftKings Sportsbook is an official sports betting partner of the NFL, and new customers can bet $5 to get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Download the app and use promo code UNBUTTONED when you sign up. DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown is yours. You okay there, COVID boy? You all right? I heard you coughing I'm over okay. there. I'm okay. You all right? Good. Yeah. Good. I actually did the read better than you, and I have an excuse. I have COVID. <laughs> did you? I didn't know that. I didn't think you're, I thought yours was a COVID-ish. It wasn't that good. Yeah. <laughs> you gave me COVID, mother <laughs> You gave me COVID. You wait till I come up there and let you bang your large fist repeatedly into my head. All right. Uh, here we go. Sunday night football. Kansas City Chiefs at the New York Jets. The Chiefs, nine and a half point favorites, over under 41.5. According to DraftKings, 95% of the handle is on Kansas City. Why don't they change the spread <laughs> if that many people are betting on the Chiefs? Right. There are going to be a lot of Jets fans working at the DraftKings Sportsbook this weekend. Chris, surely you're going to pick the Chiefs to win. Are you going to pick the Chiefs to cover? Yeah, I mean, yes and yes, uh, I am. But I will say, I mean, the Jets' defense is still damn good, right? I mean, it is. It's a handful. And they're going to pose problems for the Kansas City Chiefs. And you know what I like, I worry about in this one, you know, just like things like, Hey, you, you and I both know the chiefs are the ultimate kind of like, ah, Oh, it's the jets and they'll coast in and bullshit around and maybe do a stupid turn. That's what I worry about with them a little bit. I do. Or, or them being like a little too aggressive on the defensive side of the ball and going, let's just go for the jugular and just absolutely demolish the Jets offense. And, you know, then therefore they take too many aggressive chances and maybe leave Garrett Wilson wide open or he beats somebody in man to man coverage. I mean, that's the only thing I see possible. I, I think the Jets hang around and are kind of annoying, but this is one that just slowly but surely the Chiefs pull away. 30-16 to 16 Chiefs Sunday night football. Be there. We will be. Well, we won't be there, literally, although right. at one point we were campaigning for uh, doing the, the show from there when it was going to be Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers, but obviously it won't be. I've got 31-21, so Chiefs covering barely. Look, the Jets aren't horrible, and maybe they muster something. I don't know. Maybe Aaron Rodgers shows up and goes into the locker room and starts throwing stuff around. And I don't know. I just think the Chiefs are too good. They're not going to to piss down their leg after losing in prime time opening night. They're too good. That, that game against the Bears, they embarrass the Bears. Uh, and uh, they're not going to necessarily embarrass the Jets, but they win, they cover 31-21. And uh, the Chiefs keep rolling and the Jets get ready to try to go beat the Broncos the following weekend. All right. Last game of the week. The Seahawks at the Giants. Giants getting extra, extra rest. That happens a few times already this year where you play Thursday and you play the following Monday. That is an extra little bump. Giants will be ready. They need a win. They're one point favorites against a very good Seahawks team. Over under of 47. Who do you like? Well, I like the Seahawks. I do. I'm sorry, Pete. I know Pete's going to the game. You know, it's a good a good idea. In fact, I wish I probably would have gone as well. But uh, it'll be fun. The stadium will be electric. 
But I, I think where I just I come down to it still is, you know, the the Giants defense, the blitzing, the man to man, all of that, you know, it it's it's effective and can really disrupt some teams. I don't think this is gonna be one of those teams. They better be careful with this group here. Just because of again, Geno Smith with these receivers, too much man to man coverage, they're gonna make you pay. They are. And I'm just not sold that the Giants are, you know, an effective offensive machine quite yet. I think this game is fun. I think it goes back and forth. But I'm going to take the team that I look at to have a little bit more firepower, and that's the Seahawks. I'm going to go 27-24. I got 24-20. Same reasoning. Seahawks rolling, clicking, working a little bit better. The Giants just kind of seemed lost against the 49ers. And look, watch, they'll turn around and win the game. I mean, it is a primetime game at home, but I just feel like, you know, you see teams that that get off to a great start. It's happened to the Vikings. You see the correction. Great start with a new coach, new regime, get to the playoffs, and the backslide comes the next year. And we're seeing the backslide from the Giants, and I think it continues on Monday night. All right, that's it for the games. We're going to take a break. When we come back to Chris Sims Unbuttoned PFTPM, we'll give you the best bets and our Folsom Prison Blues pick. We'll do that next. Chris Sims on Button PFT PM Joint Mega Picks Podcast. We have two disagreements straight up, but six disagreements against the spread. We actually have time in the final segment. Usually we don't leave much time because Pete doesn't tell us to shut up. It's always his fault, not ours, for talking too much. I'm talking too much and eating into the time we have left. Best bets time, Chris. Give me one. All right, I'm going to go with the Eagles, the first one. I do think the commanders hang around for a little bit, uh, and I could see their defense giving Philadelphia a few issues, but ultimately they're just too talented, and what I really worry about is the pass protection of Sam Howell versus that Eagles front. And he's been a little loose with the football in all three football games, and that just don't make me feel warm and cozy against this group that's got waves and waves of defensive linemen coming after you. I got the Eagles as well. It reminds me of the years where it feels like a slot machine and we're landing on the same square. Give me the Eagles. I'm I'm going back to my habit of taking fairly significant home favorites. And I think the Eagles are better than eight points, better than the commander. I went with the, the, I went with the ones, the high points last week and went two and one and beat you in best bets. You know, so I'm not going to be scared to do that either there either. Yep you too okay so i think i will go with (laughs) i'm gonna go with the patriots here i think the patriots can pull off the upset on the road i picked the cowboys to win a close one but six and a half points is just too much for me i I think this patriots defense is damn good and it'll keep this game close and manageable for maybe a late steal of a game or whatever else so patriots will be my second one I'm going to go with the Chargers giving only five and a half to the Raiders. Look, the Raiders, to me, are quietly becoming a hot mess. Yeah. The Devontae Adams comments this week. Right. Jimmy Garoppolo may not play. It just feels like they can't get anything going. They've got the Chandler Jones thing hovering over them. I think the Chargers should be able to win this game by more than five and a half points, even as Raiders fans in Southern California presumably take over SoFi Stadium. All right, one more. What do you got? Well, I, there, there's a part of me that thought about, like, the Broncos, right? Bounce back game. The Bears stink, right? But I, I've learned, like, I'm not going to bet on teams that haven't shown me they know how to win yet. You know, you, you know that, that's the one that, you know, they find some way to screw it up. And so I'm not doing that. I'm going to go with the Chiefs on Sunday Night Football. That's the one. I mean, I said 30 to 16, and then there's a part of me that feels like I was kind of being nice there, right? But – yeah, the, the 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 Chiefs are we know damn good on offense. They'll be able to block good enough. They usually figure out ways to attack people downfield. And really, the Chiefs' defense has been smothering. And I think they will be all over Zach Wilson, the receivers, and that that simple offense. Too much dysfunction with the Jets this week, and it shows up. One loss becomes two. Two losses become three. They won't turn it around until next week in Denver, if then. I'm with you on the Chiefs. All right, our Folsom Prison Blues pick. We never have time to explain what this is. It speaks to a great scene in the film Walk the Line where a producer says to Johnny Cash, I want to hear the the one song you would play if you were laying dying in the gutter, the one song. So who's the one team that you would pick 
If you were laying dying in a gutter, Chris, do better than last week when you picked the Cowboys. You're right. Well, I'm already dead in the gutter, so this is dead part two, okay? And, yeah, I'm going to go with the Chiefs over the Jets. That's what I'm taking right there. I'm taking the Chiefs. I'll take the 49ers. They'll be on high alert for what the Cardinals could potentially do, and they're rested, and they're just one of the best teams in all of football. That's it. Enjoy the games. We'll see you Friday for a new edition of PFT Live. Yo, yo, thanks for watching, homies. I appreciate it. As always, the NFL season is right around the corner, so now it's your turn to hit subscribe to Chris Sims Unbutton. If you want to get all the training camp battles, preseason film review, playoff predictions, and much, much more, you know where to find it. It's right here, Chris Sims Unbutton. Please subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Peace out, homies. See you soon.